Hey, I'm Daniel Snare. I'm a photographer and videographer based on the Gold Coast in Australia. I've been shooting stills since 2006 and videography since 2015. I thought I'd show you through some of the gear that I've got and how I try to keep it as compact and agile as I can whilst I'm out traveling and in the bush. For my stills work, I use a 5D Mark III with a 24-70 f2.8 and it's the Mark II version. I love this combo. It's the perfect focal range. 24 to 70 means I can get some great wide shots with also some tighter detail shots of the products. 2.8 means that I get enough light in during dusk and sunset and sunrise. And 2.8 also means that I, I can get enough background blur that it looks professional and my clients enjoy that look, but it's not too shallow that I don't get enough detail in the background and know exactly where they are. Often I'll try and mix things up and use the wide angle lens that I've got, which is a 16 to 35 f4. If I'm not doing a wide shot or using my 24 to 70, I love using my Phantom 4 Pro Plus. Often I think you need a different perspective on your shots and the Phantom 4 Pro I find is what I use to get away from the ground level and up high in the air. Often you want to see the beautiful scenic environment that you're in and this gives me the ability not only to go up really high but often just four or five meters above the subject. For my video work, I thought I'd keep it in the Canon family and go with the C100. I already have a variety of lenses and obviously that's just gonna suit this body perfectly. I love using the 17 to 55 F 2.8 on this camera because it gives me a little bit more ability to go in tight. And it's also got IS, unlike my 24 to 70. I use the Shogun Flame seven inch monitor on top. I don't use it for its recording abilities because I find that the C100 doesn't give you that much more out of the HDMI port. But the big bright screen at 1,500 nits is perfect for outdoor use. For audio, I always have a Rode NTG3 mounted on the top. I love this mic, there's nothing I can complain about it other than it's, it's a little bit longer than I'd like. But it seems to work really well outdoors. I can do interviews with it. I even use it on occasion as a boom mic above a, a subject um, and it, it always works really well. If I'm not using the shotgun mic on the top, I have a pair of Sony UTX wireless mics that I use for interviews or talent in front of the screen. I love them because they're really rugged. When I'm in the bush, I don't have to worry about if they get dropped. And they're really strong. They're an analog signal, so they seem to just go a little bit further and they don't seem to digitally bug out as much. Um, if I'm monitoring the audio, I use a pair of Bose QC25s. I like the fact that they've got noise cancelling, so I don't have to worry about what's around me. I can really hear if there's any rustling of the clothes or any sort of um, other noises that could be picked up from those microphones. And we can sort of start again, say if it's like a plane or a car driving by or something like that. I really enjoy pairing my wireless mics with some underbodies. I just don't like seeing the clip. I'm actually wearing one right now, so it's actually just stuck onto my shirt like that. Um, there's not often any rustling that I get unless of course some guy's got like really crazy amount of chest hair and they just seem to be so unseen that they're just perfect. I buy like a, a hundred pack at a time in black just so that I've always got plenty on hand. So apart from the 17-55 f2.8 lens on my video setup, I've got my 70-200 f4 lens. That gives me the great opportunity of being able to get really tight close-up details. It's IS, so I can handhold it, and I don't have to worry about it being too shaky, even though it's a really like long lens. I went for the f4 because I don't like really heavy lenses, even though it would be great to get a little bit more extra light into the camera. That extra lightness means I can handhold it and I don't get fatigued really quickly and it's not as shaky. So I have a couple of different ways that I like to shoot with the C100. So to start off with, I use a handheld method with some rails at the bottom, just so I can put it down really easily. I don't have to worry about it falling forward or tipping over. Uh, the C100 has a really great grip built into the side. I can record, I can change aperture. If I need to change settings on the back, there's a little nipple thing that I can go around in the menu. Um, I have this monitor often set so that I can use it on my, my wrist there. And often I have the waveform set up on that screen so I can see if I'm under or over. On the actual Shogun Flame screen that I have mounted on the top, I don't have any settings or any information shown on there. I like to just use it for framing. I can tilt it down if I'm going down really low or if I'm going up kind of high, I can kind of tilt it down and it works out really well. Um, if I'm not hand holding this camera, um, I've, got some, I've got the Miller Compass 12 tripod. Um, it's got 
carbon fiber sticks and it's got a ball head so I can get them to level just right. Often when I'm off road or in the middle of nowhere, the terrain is never level. So it's great to be able to adjust that ball into the right orientation so that the, the horizon's straight. Um, otherwise, I like to use a monopod if I'm just running around with the um, sort of going between handheld or just a nice steady kind of monopod shot. Um, the other option I like is shoulder rig. So, so what I've got is just a simple shoulder pad. I mount that on the back of the rails here. And then obviously I need a, a pair of handles, which I easily mount again on the front of the, the rails here. And then just so I can see what I'm recording, I get the Shogun flame and I just mount it on a little cold shoe that I've got down the bottom here. And then I can run around for ages with this on my shoulder. Finally, if I'm not going to use handheld tripod, monopod or a shoulder rig, I use a Ronin, which I've been able to mount with the C100. I'll show you that now. This is my C100 set up now on a DJI Ronin S. Um, I have a five inch monitor instead of the seven inch Shogun Flame. Um, it's it obviously been a bit smaller, it fits on the gimbal a lot better and it, I try and keep this as light as I can so that I don't get fatigued. Um, this is also set up with a small rig accessory mount and a small rig handle. It allows me to set it up in either this top normal mode or I can adjust it by just taking the monitor off there. I can then go into underslung mode and mount the, the five inch monitor on the top here with the HDMI lead just running up the top. I find this really useful for, um, often I'm, I'm running in the bush and it's kind of, I like to get it down low um, so that I can get a bit of foreground kind of rushing past the camera. And this, this setup here allows me to mount the monitor in a way that I can see it down low, but also not have to worry about looking at the back of the camera. A couple of things I just thought I'd mention about the Ronin that I like to set up. I've actually got my three modes set up so that the first one is always, it's a, it's a pan only, it's never tilt. It's looking straight ahead. And unless of course I use the joystick, it's always gonna look straight, no matter what I do. So the idea is that I can push through the bush or I can push through a crowd and it's always gonna look where I pointed it at the beginning. Mode number two is like my really cushiony, like slow moving. I can move through. It's not gonna really pick up too much of my movement, but I can move around and it's just gonna slowly move. And then mode number three is actually really just sports mode. I've got the settings pretty close. The idea is if something rushes past, it's gonna follow my hand movement more than it is gonna like cushion it. And the idea is that I can move around real quick. It's still got a little bit of cushioning to it. So I don't have to worry about like jittery footage that I'd probably end up not using, but it's got a nice sort of quick pan to it. Sort of like sports mode, but just with a little bit of dampening. So a couple of the reasons why I really love the C100, it's got built-in NDs, which is just so useful when you're out in the bush. I don't like to have like this thing on the front that I've got to take off and then I might drop it and I've got to have a little case for it so I don't scratch it. Um, the other thing is the record time. If I'm doing an interview with someone, I usually use this as an A cam if I borrow my mate's 5D Mark IV as a B cam. It'll just record forever. I don't have to worry about it overheating or it's stopping after 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it is. It's got XLR ins, which just allow me to have two inputs. I can either have the shotgun on one channel and then a, a wireless mic on the other channel. Um, speaking of wireless mics, I thought I'd show you a quick little, um, obviously without the, a, a cage or anything like that, because I use it on a Ronin. Um, I thought I'd show you how I mount two wireless receivers on this, this uh, this top handle. Obviously the, the back has this cold shoe for my monitor and the front only has one. So off, off eBay, I actually got this dual cold shoe mount, which I actually mount just on here. And then I can mount two wireless receivers just in this top section there. And it still keeps me really small and, and mobile. I can handhold and I can move around without having to worry about these uh, extra big things just taking up room. Um, so along with the C100, I actually use a DJI Phantom 4 Pro, which I actually mentioned before for my stills. Um, I have the plus version because it has the, the built-in screen. 
Uh, one thing I noticed when I was out in the bush, I hate having to put my phone or an iPad or whatever in there. There's more cables, it's just in case my phone's running dead because I've been using it or someone calls me or something like that. It's just so much easier having the monitor built into the controller. So that just makes it a lot easier when I'm trying to do things really quickly and when I'm out in the bush. Um, so that's all my, my film gear um, that I use, the C100 and the Phantom 4 Pro. Um, a couple of other things, I don't have a, a backpack. I often use this Pelican 1620 to cart around all my gear. Um, often I'm traveling in a plane or in the back of a, a ute or just in, in the bush in general. It's just so much easier knowing that all my gear is safe and padded inside of this big case. I'm often able to fit most of my gear. The C100 I actually find I just carry. If I'm going on a plane, I take it on handheld, like carry-on. Um, that way it's just safe and I don't have to try and fit it into this big case. And then lighting wise, um, I have a couple of strobes which aren't in this case just for some, some stills work if I need to. Or I've got the Aperture MC, which um, is just a little compact, a little light. It packs a lot of power. Um, I have a little USB power brick that I plug into it so it's just constantly charging. I don't have to worry about the battery dying. Um, and then I've got a Yongyo N, uh, sorry, YN 300 and it's the number three version. Um, just takes Sony batteries. Um, once again, it's nice and small. I don't often use really powerful lights because I'm more of a natural light shooter. Um, often if it's the middle of the day, I don't try and overpower it. I just work with it. I'll find a nice shady spot or often if it's, it's, if it's a vehicle or something like that driving, we can't keep the lights up with it. So it's just nice to be able to pick a spot if we're doing an interview. And these provide enough light when we're out in the bush under a shady sort of environment. Um, one thing I actually got this idea of a mate is we just have this little piece of um, see-through material and it just Velcros onto the edges. So it actually means that I don't have to carry around a softbox or anything like that. Um, I do have umbrellas and stuff like that, but it catches the wind and I just prefer to not have to worry about the light. So often I just Velcro that on the front and it gives me a nice soft light. So that's all my gear. I'm not sure if there's anything else I really need to go through other than I just you know have a whole bunch of Ziploc kind of bags that I get from the office supply shop. It has cables and adapters and, and then batteries and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so that's been my, my gear. I got yeah, a variety of stills and a variety of video uh, equipment that I use. Um, and often I'm trying to keep it as mobile as I can and as, as compact as I can, because I'm often traveling or in the bush and I need to make sure it's all safe. So hope you enjoyed and I'll speak to you next time.